Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now obviously we're going through quite a peak period with uh, generative uh, AIs. We've got, you know, ChatGPT, you've got Bing, you've got Bard, which was a video I did yesterday. And the thing is all these uh, chat models, all of these uh, uh, machine learning models run up in the cloud, Azure, and all these kind of have big GPUs and everything. But did you know it is possible to run a pretty good uh, kind of chat GPT equivalent on your laptop. No need for any special graphics cards, no need for any special hardware, just a normal laptop. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So we're going to take a quick look at the current language models and the new models that can be run on a laptop. And then I'm going to give you a demonstration of it running so you can see how good it actually is. And then right then we're going to talk about why this is important. It's more, trust me, it's more than just an interesting exercise that somebody is able to hack together. There's actually some important consequences for this. Okay, let's dive in to have a look. Okay, so to get these uh, generative uh, pre-trained transformers, GPT, these language models running on a PC, not on a huge supercomputer. Today we're going to be looking at Llama and Alpaca. We'll get into those uh, in a moment. Let's just cover some of the basics. All machine learning models, neural networks, are used in two phases. First, the training stage, where the model is fed huge amounts of data which train the model to understand whatever it is that it's being trained for. You know, is this a cat? Is it not a cat? Is this a hot dog? Is it not a hot dog? And then secondly, there's the inference stage where the model is interrogated or queried and it gives a response, it infers an answer based on the input that you can give it. So up until now, that's mainly been about classification. So is this a picture of a cat? Yes or no. But of course, we also have things that uh, generate an, a, an output. So you translate an audio into text. So when we speak to the various assistants that there are on Android and on, you know, on these home smart home devices and so on, at some point there has to be a translation from the audio into some kind of text or some kind of internal representation so that the device can uh, reply. And now what is the real hot topic at the moment, of course, is these uh, models that can generate text, generate images. I'm sure we're going to get other types of generation uh, coming out uh, all the time now. Uh, I saw a recent thing about how you can generate, you know, kind of robotic movements uh, for, you know, for factories for picking up boxes and things based on an input, and then it generates the right sequence uh, of movement. So generate something based on, on the input. Now, training is a single user task in that while the model is being trained, it isn't required to do anything else. It just sits there and learns. So there's one model, it's just being trained. It could take thousands of hours, can take crazy amounts of hardware. You know, some of the numbers floating around for, I think this was GPT-3, are like 285,000 CPU cores, over 10,000 uh, GPU cores, these were NVIDIA GPU cores, and 400 gigabit per second network connectivity. And these are all humming along for hours and hours and hours, days and days and days, as all of this stuff is fed into the system and it is trained. Now, obviously, you're not going to be doing that on a PC of any kind because this is obviously a huge thing. Now, inference is a multi-user task in that lots of queries are happening at once over multiple copies of the trained model. This requires lots of hardware, mainly because of scale, also because of the, the you know just the size of these models that they're created, 175 billion parameters. Well, I think we mentioned that a bit later in a further slide. Uh, chat GPT is often unavailable or has been in the past due to demand because it just needs huge amounts of hardware to run this just because millions of people are using it. Now, uh, this is a common example of what would be used for both training and also for inference. And just as a side note, NVIDIA really are coming out on top of this whole current you know, uh, era of uh, GPTs and that kind of stuff because they're all using NVIDIA GPUs and NVIDIA have these various uh, things like this is the uh, NVIDIA H100 with 600, 640 gigabytes of total GPU memory. Uh, and it's got four NVS switches so it can connect all these different bits inside of it. 
56 core fourth generation Intel processors, 30 terabytes of, of SSD, and this is one pod that you can buy like this, and then these can be built together into a huge kind of supercomputer, and there can be many rows of these. Now, of course, this is all happening somewhere in a data warehouse. This becomes available to companies like OpenAI via you know, Microsoft Azure or you know other services that are offering these uh, in the cloud. Now, la large language models, ChatGPT 3.5, GPT-4 are examples of what they call LLMs, large language models, 175 billion parameters in ChatGPT 3.5. A parameter means a weight and a bias, the number of parameters in a neural network directly to the number of neurons and the number of connections between them. So the more parameters there are, the, the denser, the thicker, the greater it is. And you need supercomputers, as I said, for both training uh, and for inference, 175 billion. But now there are some new language models that have appeared. First, we're gonna talk about Llama. So this is the one from Meta, that's the Facebook people a collection of foundational language models ranging from 7 billion to 65 billion parameters. So that's at least two and a half times smaller than ChatGPT 3.5. And Meta says that Llama, with the 13 billion uh, uh, parameters, outperforms ChatGPT while being 10 times smaller. So this is the point. If we can, we've got these huge language models and they're working surprisingly well, can we optimize, in quote, and bring these down to smaller sizes, can we fine tune them? Can we cut off anything that's not really needed and so that we get a more efficient uh, model? Now, if it's 10 times smaller, then you know, even just using simple maths, you're gonna need a computer that's 10 times smaller. So maybe you don't need a supercomputer to run uh, one of these language models. So there is an open source project called Llama.cpp. It's, it's a Llama C++ program that allows you to query the Llama model. And the goal of the author was to run the model on a MacBook. Uh, so it's a plain C implementation without any funny dependencies. Uh, the Apple Silicon is a first class uh, citizen. However, it does also support things like AVX2 for x86 architecture. I've tried this personally on some Jetson hardware, the Jetson Orin, the Jetson uh, Xavier NX works great on those. Uh, and so it also runs only on the CPU. So it will be interesting to see if people actually take this and uh, make a GPU version of it. This only runs on the CPU. And the way it can run on the CPU is by using four bit quantization. So what is 4-bit quantization? So let's ha have a look in the next slide. This is a process of reducing the precision of the parameters. Again, that's the weights and the biases and the connections we're talking about, so that they consume less memory. In other words, the process of quantization is the process of taking a neural network, which generally uses 32-bit floats to represent the parameters, and instead to convert them to a smaller representation, in our case, 4-bit integers. So obviously, a lot, lot less precision there. You know, just think if you want to think about, you know, back in the days when we used to have computers uh, back, in, back in the 80s, 90s, you know, four bit color. If you show, showed a picture of four bit color, it looked pixelated. The colors were not very good. Nowadays, of course, we use 24 bit and 32 bit color in just about everything. So that's not a problem. But so to imagine that kind of idea, but take it down to a neural network, uh, more blocky, you know, less, less colors. It doesn't look so good. So it does, it's not a good, it's not a good representation. However, if you see a four bit color picture of a cat, you still recognize it as a cat. And the neural network can still work. Now, the result is it's smaller, faster, and more efficient, but the draw drawbacks are that it's an accuracy degradation uh, and lower precision, which means you can also lose uh, information. So when we come to the test in a minute, you have to remember that this is one that's been reduced down to four bits and also it's running on a PC and see what we can achieve. So here's a question for you. What case do you use on your phone? I recommend Phoenix cases. They are ultra slim. Why put on a big, thick, chunky case, ruin all that design that the manufacturer has spent so much time perfecting? You really should check out Phoenix cases. And there's a link in the description below. If you do use it, it's an affiliate link, which means you help out this channel. And the other one we're gonna, in fact, this is the one we're gonna use for the demo is Alpaca, Llama, Alpaca. They're all kind of going along in the same. Now, Alpaca is a is a is a, is the Llama model, but it's been fine tuned to train to make it a kind of uh, an instruction follow model so you give it an instruction and it follows it so it's trained on 52,000 instruction follow demonstrations and so there's another project called alpaca.cpp which is a set of modifications to llama.cpp to work with the alpaca and to add a chat interface all the links to these github repositories will be uh, in the description below they're really easy to set up if you know anything about just compiling a 
piece of code from ChatGPT, downloading the files that you need for the models or the weights and uh, the parameters we were just talking about. It's actually pretty easy to get yourself up and running and the instructions are pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do this now. We're going to run Alpaca and I want to just point out that this is just running on an Asus laptop, not a very expensive one. It's got a Ryzen 5, 550, uh, 5500U at 6 core, 12 threads, 16 gigs of RAM and it's running Linux. And in fact, when it's running, it uses about four gigabytes of RAM. Now, when you use some of the other Llama models, they can go up quite big. I did run the 30 billion parameter one on a Jetson Orin uh, because it has 32 gigabytes of memory and that did work on there. But just, just to show you how good Alpaca is uh, on an Asus laptop, let's do that now. Okay, so here we are inside of the project. You just some C files and some binary files and some other things that you need here. And basically there's a little program called Chat. So you just run chat and it will go ahead and load up the model into memory as i said it takes about four gigs and then it will give you a prompt so now we can type so this is just like chat gpt in that i can just ask it questions so i've prepared some questions let's go with the first one what are the best places to visit in new york remember i'm asking this of a language model which is running on a laptop in four gigabytes of memory so if this can come up with anything that's even reasonable english you know and even has something you know that's actually quite good this is astounding so here we go the top destination for tourists include times square central park the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, among others. Well, there you go. Not a very long answer, but that is a correct answer. And so, da -da, <laughs> I'm running this on a laptop, not on a supercomputer somewhere uh, up in the cloud. Okay, let's see. Let's make these but more difficult. Explain what we're going to ask you about Pinocchio. This is something I've been doing in the other ones. Explain uh, my other videos on on ChatGPT and Bard and so on. Explain the plot of Pinocchio in one sentence. Let's see. Now, it doesn't. I haven't told you what Pinocchio is, so I'm assuming it knows what Pinocchio is. It's got the story built into it there. Pinocchio is a wooden panic dreams becoming a human, but must prove himself worthy by completing various tasks before he can be transformed into a real boy again. The story follows his adventures and Mrs. Adventures, as well as the lessons that are learned along the way. Absolutely right. So there you go. I've just... Oh, <laughs> this is so amazing. It's running on my laptop. I've just... I don't need, you know, all these huge things uh, running up in these huge uh, cloud things. Um... I'll talk more about why this is important at the very end. So do stick around to the very end because this is the, this is really important to understand where the, where these generative uh, models are going and what it means for us as consumers. Anyway, let's ask it another one. What is Wi-Fi 6E? Now, uh, I don't know what the cutoff date for this is. How much does it know about Wi-Fi 6E? Wi-Fi with the registered trademark 6 or 802.11ax was released on the 6th generation and represents an upgrade in wireless technology offering faster speeds. Now, that's all true, but of course, the 6E version is what our 6E, oh, we go, is an extension that has support for up to eight antennas on each access point. Of course, the thing about 6E is it runs in 6 gigahertz, not 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. So, okay, the model didn't know that, but the tactic generation it is readable English. It's about Wi-Fi. It's got some interesting facts in there. Of course, remember, this is just running in four gigabytes of memory. So I'm impressed. Of course, this isn't good enough for, you know, a final product, but this just shows you the direction things are going. As I said, wait to the end. We'll talk more about what this is. It's 5 a.m. You're asleep and there is a loud knock at the door. It's a friend who has come over to have breakfast in your fridge. Are eggs, bread, milk, juice, a jar of honey. What do you open first? Now, I've done this on the other videos about ChatGPT, Bard and so on. Of course, one is that you should open the front door first because your friend standing this is a kind of a kid. Other people reply, you should open your eyes first because you are asleep. So anyway, let's just see what this is. The point is, if this can even understand a little bit about what I'm saying here, this is just absolutely amazing. It may not get the trick, the joke about the fact that you should open your eyes first or open the door first. However, if you can understand, right, opening up the fridge for food can be tricky when there's so much variety in one place. Absolutely. If I had to choose between opening an egg or some freshly baked bread from, from, from my friend's visit, it would have to go with eggs. Egg whites are a great source of protein and vitamins, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So uh, now it's spewing out a bit of extra text here that's come from this inference process you know instruction write down three things you can do today in order to make your life easier tomorrow and it's look it's, it's running on look so clearly there's some work to be done here about not letting this thing you know kind of wax lyrical when because it's just generating text and it can kind of trick itself into into generating more text which is what we're seeing now Okay, the final test for this model is write a list of five names for characters in a sci-fi novel. Let's see whether it can understand what a sci-fi novel is, whether it can generate names for me or not. One, 
Dr. Catherine Smith, PhD, a brilliant scientist who has dedicated her life to finding the cure for an epidemic that is plaguing, raging, ravaging humanity's population centre around the other. She works with it. Okay, so yep, she's a good character. Brilliant. Dr. John Smith, MD, Catherine's husband. Oh, look, so they've done a relationship between the first character and the second character. He's also trying to, to find a cure. This is very interesting. So uh, it's interesting they've connected the two together there. Three, Captain James Jones, a brave captain of an... Inter now, remember, this is all coming out like ChatGP does, in a word at a time, but this is all coming out of my laptop. Dr. Sarah Smith, PhD, Catherine's daughter. We've got a whole family connection thing going on here. <laughs> this is quite clever. It's creating me a plot. for uh, Maybe this is a real book. I don't know, but some of you sci-fi fans who've read more than I am, maybe this is, these are real characters. I don't know. This is quite interesting. Um, and who have we got number five? Commander John Jones, a brave commander of the Intergalactic State to explore new worlds. Fantastic. I think that's absolutely amazing for what, you know, we expect so much from ChatGPT, but this is running on my laptop. Anyway, let's talk about that now. Why is it important this is just running on my laptop? Okay, so why is this important? Well, in the kind of general history of computing, we always get this swinging back and forth between running things locally and running things remotely. You know, way, way back when we had kind of mainframes, there was always terminals, and then there were workstations that were connected to the mainframes. And then ultimately we had the kind of the era of the PC where the power kind of came back to, you know, to the local user. And then as we go on, we've now got cloud services. And so everything's done up in the cloud, but even things like that with Google's uh, Pixel phones, they want to bring a lot of the stuff back to the actual phone itself and not up to the cloud. So there's always this swinging back and forth. Now at the moment we're in this great boon period for uh, generative uh, AIs and it's all running in the cloud. But if we can actually generate models that are small enough or particularly models that are good for a particular domain so they're only experts in one little area then having those running on a smartphone, on a laptop, as an assistant, even in some kind of consumer gadget would be really really good. And the way this research is going it's showing that it may not only be that these models run up in the cloud, but we could actually run them usefully and actually uh, use them effectively on a local device. And I find that really interesting. We're doomed. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.